Depend. Depend flyer on karo. Yes, yes. Yeah. So good evening all. It's our um, as usual Friday evening, and uh, one more stalwart from our ISC Maharashtra chapter, Dr. Narish Paliwal sir is on this evening with us. And today's topic is dexmedomidin and ketamine in pediatric patients as procedure sedation. Even you can ask other questions also with sir. And uh, this one is the base paper presentation in uh, Isapan Maha Nagpur chapter. Uh, sir is an associate professor at Dr. PDMC, PDMMC Amravati. Sir is a, uh, one of the most uh, wanted, I can say, is, uh, faculty for uh, national and state conferences nowadays. And uh, he's uh, having uh, various publications on segmental spinal, as, as we everybody knows on that, and Dexcate. So I will be uh, very much thank you, sir. You came again on our platform second time. And uh, this one is also a good topic. Uh, last time you presented segmental spinal. And uh, I personally tell you that I did now 200 uh, cases till date uh, segmental spinal with your uh, discussion with your case mate now. And, uh, and our colleagues also learning these things. And maybe in your future, uh, we can do workshop on that. Uh, and second thing, um, I'm really at, uh, looking forward on this also, dexmetobidin and ketamine uh, prospectus that we will use as a private forum point of view uh, regularly henceforth. So thank you, sir. Once again, you are coming on our platform. Please share your screen. Sir. Thanks, Sachin, for the kind introduction. Uh... I'm very much thankful to ISN Nanded for inviting me again on this platform. It's really a pleasure to be there with ISN Nanded. They are doing so much activities. Without wasting much time, uh, I'll start with my presentation. So my topic for today's presentation, are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's yes. very clear. Am I audible? Audible. Yes, sir. Very, very clear. Okay. My topic for today's presentation is dexmedetomidin and ketamine in pediatric patients as procedural sedation. So, initially, we will uh, look a brief review about some aspects of pediatric procedural sedation and then about the individual drugs, uh, dexmedetomidin and ketamine in pediatric patients, and then the magical combination of dexket. So initially, a brief review about the, some aspects of pediatric procedural sedation. The pediatric procedural sedation has expanded in volume and demand over the past decade. Everything from the name to the drugs, practitioners, monitoring guidelines, and billing course has evolved. In contrast, very few new sedatives have developed, and many are not approved for children. The current sedation guidelines are often contradictory and vary both between and within specialty groups. In context to the, this procedural sedation analgesia, children are not just small adults, uh, more likely to have area of obstruction during sedation due to larger tongue, epiglottis, and occiput. Children desaturate more quickly after apnea than even moderately ill adults. They require more frequent sedation dosing, and sedation levels are difficult to assess. They more likely and quickly can go to deeper levels of sedation. And uh, the drug doses calculation be based on precise weight measurements and not on parents' estimate. This is a common mistake few people make. According to American College of Emergency Physicians, the definition of procedural sedation analgesia is a technique of administering sedatives or sedative agents without, with or without analgesics to induce a state that allows the patient to tolerate unpleasant procedures while maintaining cardiorespiratory function. What are the goals and aims of pediatric PSA? Henceforth, we will be calling it as a PSA. 
to guard the patient's safety and welfare, minimize physical discomfort and pain, control the anxiety, minimize psychological trauma, and maximize the potential for amnesia. Control behavior and or moments to allow safe completion of procedure. Return the patient to a state in which safe discharge from medical supervision is possible. Intent is to achieve these goals while assuring that the patient is able to independently maintain oxygenation, airway control, and cardiorespiratory functions. These are few of the previously used terms like moderate sedation, also popularly known as conscious sedation, is a drug-induced depression of consciousness in which patient responds purposefully. Deep sedation is patient cannot be easily aroused, but respond purposefully after repeated or painful stimulation. And the third is a a special kind of dissociative sedation, typical of ketamine, is a trance-like catalytic state characterized by profound analgesia and amnesia with retention of protective airway reflexes, spontaneous respiration, and cardiovascular stability. To assess the depth or the quality of sedation, there are various scales which uh, have been developed over time. Uh, one of them is University of Michigan sedation scale. This is an observational tool that scores the patient's responsiveness to stimuli for assessment of depth of sedation in children aged 6 months to 12 years. This is a five-point scale. I will not go into detail of this. The conscious sedation, which was previously used term, is uh, equivalent or less than University of Michigan sedation scale 2. Uh, these are some other parameters like behavioral response, airways, spontaneous ventilation, cardiovascular function during minimal, moderate, to deep sedation, and general anesthesia. All these parameters are usually well maintained in moderate sedation, minimal and moderate sedation. The Ramsey sedation score is amongst the oldest and the most widely used of the scales in both adults and children. This is a six point scale. Pediatric sedation straight scale. This is a new six point pediatric sedation straight scale intended to analyze the quality rather than the depth of sedation. The University of Michigan sedation scale used to analyze the depth of sedation. Here it is the quality rather than the depth. And in this, the state two is supposed to be an ideal state for procedure sedation analysis here. After sedation discharge, readiness can be evaluated by altitude recovery score. Altitude recovery score takes into account the activity, respiration, circulation, consciousness, and color. There are some points for each of them, and the total score must be more than eight at the conclusion of monitoring. What are the prerequisites for PSA? Emergency resuscitation equipments appropriate for pediatric patients should be immediately available. And for this, soap me is a useful mnemonic where the S stands for suction catheter apparatus, O for oxygen supply and delivery equipments, A for airway equipments, P for positive pressure delivery systems. M for various types of monitorings, E for emergency card with alternative airways. Pre-procedure fasting guidelines according to ASA, clear liquid two hours, breast milk four hours, infant formula, non-human milk, and light meal up to six hours. Now, the procedures requiring sedation, as you all know, there are non-invasive or invasive procedures. Amongst the non-invasive, MRI, CT, other imaging studies, radiation therapy, electroencephalography, in invasive and painful procedures, various types of biopsies, uh, then lumbar puncture, endoscopies, various types of scopies, thoracosynthesis, parasynthesis, burn dressing, wound debridement, fracture reduction, placement and change of center lines, ultrasound guided aspirations, etc. etc. The choice of sedative agents, the targeted depth of sedation, and the agents used largely depend upon the anticipated degree of pain, allowable amount of motion during the procedure, and following patient factors, whether the patient has any comorbidities, fasting status of the kid, age and developmental level of the kid, ability to cooperate, degree of anxiety, and any prior problems with specific medications. Commonly used drugs for pediatric procedure sedation analgesia. Uh, Remipentanil is not freely available, so I have not included that. Uh, commonly used ones are midazolam, propofol, etomidate, ketamine, and a new all in one drug, dexmetidomidine. Then there are various uh, permutation combinations which can be used, like uh, one is remipentanil with propofol, 
the other one is ketohol that is ketamine plus propofol and the uh, most important and the magical one that is dexmedetomidine and ketamine which is being used very widely nowadays it can be used intravenously intramuscularly uh, buccal route or intranasally now coming to dexmedetomidine in pediatrics <clears throat> Though off-label, Dexmed has a firm position in pediatric anesthesiologist armamentarium. Its respiratory sparing effect and bioavailability by various routes are some of the valued features. It's a highly selective alpha-2 organist, provides sedation that mimics natural sleep, anxiolysis, sympathalysis, and analgesic sparing effects without respiratory depression. Off-label use is generally acceptable if there is no suitable alternative available or used in accordance with the current medical opinion. Recently, the potential organ protective effects with preserving neurocognitive function has put it in the forefront of clinical and bench research. Pharmacokinetics and dynamics in children, they change markedly from neonate to infant to adult. Highly lipophilic drug, high volume of distribution, predominantly bound to plasma proteins, crosses blood brain barrier. It has a rapid distribution phase of six minutes. Elimination half-life is around 1.8 to hours. It's broken down by hepatic enzymes to the inactive metabolites. Clearance in neonates, which is around 42.4% of adult values, it reaches to 84.4% of by one year of age. So the clearance in neonates and infants is reduced owing to immaturity of elimination pathways. So it should be used with caution in neonates, especially in the first two weeks of life. Hemodynamics after dexmedetomidine in children it has a dose dependent effect on mean arterial pressure and heart rate. Median effective dose intravenously over five seconds without significant hemodynamic compromise was found to be 0.49 micrograms per kg in healthy children. Transient dose dependent hypertension can occur more frequently with large boluses and more likely in infants than in older children. Bradycardia up to 30% from baseline should be expected. Use of anticholinergics to treat bradycardia should be with caution as transient hypertension can occur after the use of anticholinergics. So, bradycardia needs treatment only when concomitant vital signs are abnormal. It usually resolves after reducing or stopping dexmed. Features of dexmed sedation child sedated but arousable, alert, and respond without uncomfortable delirium like state. It usually resembles natural sleep may return to sedation again. No clouding of consciousness like drugs acting on GABA systems like imidazolam or propofol. Dexmet sedation lacks amnestic properties. This is the only drawback uh, dexmetritomidine has. Analgesic opiate sparing effect lasts quite longer, even it can last up to 24 hours after the use of dexmet. There are some special indications for dexmet, even at higher than recommended doses, that is around three micrograms per kg per hour, Dexmed maintains the airway potency and tone in obstructive sleep apnea kits. So it is an ideal choice for drug-induced sleep endoscopy and dynamic airway imaging. For EEG in patients with autism and neurobehavioral disorders, it is useful due to its non-EEG and seizural turning effects. Recent literature supports intranasal Dexmed 2.64 micrograms per kg for sedation for pulmonary function tests in children aged 1 to 3 years. Three years. Uh, recent interest in using Dexmed to provide sedation anxiolysis and algesia for pediatric patients with severe symptoms near the end of life. It has a special interest nowadays in palliative care. Recently, the Italian Drug Agency has passed a landmark decision approving Dexmed via intranasal or intravenous route for the palliative care of children outside the ICU setting, that is, in the hospital or at home, and unresponsive to conventional therapy. Intranasal Dexmed for sedating child with epidermal viscous bullosa and one with refractory dystonia without side effects was found to be very effective and without tachyphylaxis when used at home for up to three months. Some relative contraindications or precautions. Rapid bolus of Dexmed along with high concentrations of volatiles should be used with very cautiously. There are some other conditions like cardiac conduction abnormalities, septic shock, concurrent treatment with decoxin, beta adrenergic blockers, calcium channel blockers, small inhibitors, or other agents that predispose to bradycardia and hypertension where it should be used with uh, great caution. And also in hepatic diseases where the elimination half life can be prolonged, even up to seven hours. 
Caution in inference and neonates. Caution should be exercised when the expert situation is used in inference and neonates receiving epidural analgesia without support from external warming devices. Inference depend more on non shivering thermogenesis than on shivering and vasoconstriction. So, the expert interferes with non shivering thermogenesis and it has a potential for hypothermia as a result of inhibition of lipolysis. Longer elimination of half life and clearance in premature. So, lower doses of dexmate are usually recommended. Routes of administration and doses. Dexmate is used by almost all possible routes except for uh, rectal loop. So, dexmate has been described by intravenous, intramuscular, intranasal, oral, buccal, and recently by subcutaneous route of administration. Intravenously, the loading dose of 0.5 to 1 mcg per kg followed by 0.2 to 0.7 mcg per kg per hour. Intramuscular it can be 1 to 4 micrograms per kg and intranasally can be from 1 to 3 micrograms per kg. Bioavailability by oral route is very poor, so oral route is usually not recommended. And buccal route of administration can be very challenging in pediatric patients. So the most preferred route after intravenous is an intranasal route, which needs special mention. So, intranasal is the most used extravascular route of experiment administration in children. Bioavailability by nasal is around 40.7% and buccal is more. They differ quite markedly, but still the buccal experiment has not been found to be superior to intranasal experiment. This is the most convenient, minimally invasive, and experiment can be delivered by droplet method or by mucosal automatic devices. There is no nasal irritation like intranasal uh, midazolone. Additional benefits are reduced uh, post op nausea vomiting and need for rescue analgesics. Time to peak effect with 2 to 3 micrograms per kg in children aged 0 to 11 years was found to be 45 minutes. There are some disadvantages of intranasal dexmate. When used alone, the sedative effects are concentration dependent. At a plasma concentration between 0.2 to 0.3 nanograms per ml, patient may be in arousable sedation. And plasma concentration above 1.9 nanograms per ml, patient will be in deep sedation and difficult to arouse. Heart rate is also dose dependent. And so the increase in the dose may lead to decrease in the heart rate. Dexmate induced sleep is like natural sleep. Even with higher doses of dexmate, child may get awakened by external stimuli leading to failure of sedation. For more effectiveness, it's better to combine with another drug rather than increasing the dose of dexmate. This is mucosal automated devices, which can be used for intranasal delivery. Draw back the plunger to fill the syringe with proper medicine volume, connect automizer, inject half the drug into the nostril, uh, nostril inject the remainder into the other nostril. This was a study comparing the buccal and nasal dexmitidomidin medication for pediatric patients and the conclusion was intranasal dexmitidomidin in one micrograms per kg is more effective than buccal administration for premedication in children. Now coming to the another drug that is ketamine as this is you all are familiar with this drug using from ages together. So ketamine is a phencyclidine derivative non-competitive NMD and glutamate receptor antagonist. This is a anesthetic with sedative analgesic and amnestic properties. Those different effects, it is anxiolysis and analgesia at lower doses and providing dissociative sedation, amnesia and analgesia at higher doses. It has been given a level A recommendation by American College of Emergency Physicians policy statements for both safety and efficacy in providing PSA for children in emergency departments. Subsilent features of ketamine dissociative state, child passes into trance-like state, eyes may remain open. And there is a normal or slightly increased muscle tone, analgesia is excellent, amnesia is total, airway reflexes are usually maintained, slight increase in blood pressure and heart rate, nystagmus and lacrimation is typical of ketamine. Indication, contraindications, we all know indications providing sedation, analgesia for moderate to severe short painful procedures like suturing, fracture reductions, insulin drainage, removal of foreign bodies, etc. Relative contraindications, children below three months of age, active pulmonary infections, including upper respiratory infection, cardiovascular diseases where increases in the heart rate and workload is not desirable. Suspected or increased intracranial pressure, glaucoma or acute glow injuries, thyrotoxicosis, porphyria, psychosis, etc. 
routes of administration, most commonly given by the intravenous or intramuscular route. Intravenous lead is one to two milligram per kg over one minute. So repeat 0.5 milligrams per kg every 10 minutes as needed. Onset is within one to two minutes and duration is 15 to 30 minutes. Intramuscular lead can be from three to five milligrams per kg, even more. Onset five to 10 minutes, duration 30 to 60 minutes. There are possibly higher adverse respiratory events, higher rates of emesis, longer recovery period with intramuscular ketamine. So whenever possible, intravenous route is preferable. Side effects, there can be random purposeless movements, muscle twitching, rash and vocalizations, tachycardia, hypertension. Hypersalivation can be there, transient laryngospasm can occur, apnea and respiratory depression, it's also transient. MS is more common with intramuscular use and children over eight years of age. Unpleasant emergent phenomena can occur more common beyond mid-adolescence and can be decreased by positive psychology prior to administration. You can conceal the child and take him to the, his uh, dreams. So that can reduce the, the side effects, unpleasant emergent phenomena. Recovery agitation is common in 1.4% of the kids. Now coming to the most, uh, my most favored uh, and uh, magical combination of dexmedetomidine and ketamine. Uh, literature search was conducted by PubMed Relax and Embass to identify 21 articles from 2015 to 19 that address the use of dexmedetomidine and ketamine together during anesthetic procedures in population between birth to 18 years old. And the conclusion is the literature is favorable to the use of DEXCAT for invasive non-invasive procedures inside and outside the operating room, presenting an attractive profile for pediatric patients. The combination of DEXMED and ketamine makes pharmacological sense. They balance the hemodynamic and adverse effects of each other. DEXMED prevents the tachycardia, hypotension, salivation, and emergence from ketamine, and ketamine prevents the bradycardia and hypotension caused by DEXMED. Ketamine also speeds the onset of sedation and eliminates the slow onset of dexmet. The most effective regime is as well as dose of 0.5 to 1 mcg per kg of dexmet plus 1 to 2 mg per kg of ketamine mixed together, diluted and given slowly over a minute to initiate target sedation. The maintenance can be 0.5 micrograms per kg of dexmet plus 1 mg per kg of ketamine as needed uh, short boluses, or it can be used as an infusion. Co-administration can be intramuscular, buccal, but intranasal is the most preferred route when intravenous is not uh, feasible or desired. Lack of recovery-related agitation is very significant with the use of dexcat. Potential, potential utility of this combo for procedural sedation in kids with compromised cardiovascular and respiratory functions. In pediatric MRI, combo of intramuscular dexmed and ketamine was superior to either drug given individually. Useful combination for securing difficult airway of infants, toddlers, and developmentally challenged children while maintaining the spontaneous respiration. In drug induced sleep endoscopy for OSA in children, it is found to have more success with less incidence of total saturation as compared to when midazolam or propofol is used. It is more useful for such. Uh, procedures. Its successful use has been reported for children undergoing cardiac catheterizations, upper GI scopies, extracorporeal shockwave lithotripathy, muscle biopsies, mediastinal mass excision, etc. Et this is a chart to show the heart rate changes with DEX and DEX kit administration. With the DEX alone, there can be initial bradycardia, but with DEX kit, uh, you can see in the pink box, it is usually well maintained. So is the mean arterial pressure with DEXCAT. With DEX alone, there can be a biophasic response, initial hypertension followed by hypertension. But with DEXCAT in proper um, combination, you can have a maintained uh, mean arterial pressure. These are a few of the studies which I have included in my presentations over the last 10 years. This was during 2010, dexmetrovidine and ketamine for sedation during spinal anesthesia in children by Joseph Tobias. And uh, they found that the combination of ketamine and dexmetrovidine provides effective sedation during spinal anesthesia in infants and children with limited effects on cardiovascular and ventilative function. 
<coughs> this was again by Joseph Tobias in 2012, an effective alternative for procedural sedation. And the conclusion was the trial is favorable regarding the utility of combination for procedural sedation. This was a study about a combination of uh, dexmetrotomidine ketamine for upper GIS copies in children, a preliminary report. It was in 2013. And the results of this case series show that this drug combination not only promises to be clinically effective, but also safe for upper gastrointestinal endoscopies in children. This was in pediatric anesthesia journal, comparison of combination of dexmetrotomidine and ketamine to propofol or propofol seoplurane for drug-induced sleep endoscopy in children. And their conclusions was the dose regime of propofol use alone or in combination with seoplurane appear to be associated with more oxygen desaturations and a lower rate of successful completion than the combination of dexmetrotomidine and ketamine, especially during dice in children with OHC. Or in general of anesthesia and clinical care, a new approach to procedure sedation in children, the intramuscular use of dexmetrotomidine and ketamine. This was used for a trans hepatic central venous access in a 13 year old with acute enterocolitis. They used it successfully by intramuscular route. This was in pediatric anesthesia general analysis of 17,948 pediatric patients undergoing procedural sedation with a combination of intranasal dexmetrotomidine and ketamine. And the procedural sedation using this combination by intranasal route is associated with acceptable effectiveness with very low incidence of adverse effects, adverse events. This was again a study comparing midazolam ketamine versus uh, dexmetrotomidine ketamine for anesthesia of pediatric patients undergoing cardiac catheterization. This was in 2019. And the conclusion was uh, dexcat combination was superior to metazolone ketamine combination because of less intraoperative ketamine consumption required for adequate intraoperative sedation and shorter recovery time. This was in Brazilian Journal of Anesthesiology in 2020, all ketamine versus dexmetrotomidine ketamine for sedation during upper GIS copies. And the uh, conclusion was the propofol ketamine combination was associated with shorter recovery time, but uh, patients used to have more desaturations with propofol ketamine combinations, while the dexcat combination showed less need for additional doses. This was in American Journal of Emergency Medicine, uh, dexmetrotomidine combination with ketamine for pediatric procedure sedation for premedication. A dexcat for pediatric sedation results in better sedation outcomes than dexmetrotomidine or ketamine alone by shortening onset of sedation and recovery while maintaining hemodynamic and respiratory stability with low incidence of adverse events. This is in 2021, the intranasal dexmetrotomidine plus ketamine for procedural sedation in children, adaptive randomized controlled non inferiority multi center trial, ketodex. It's a statistical analysis plan. Uh, this is ongoing trial using different dose combinations of individual drugs to evaluate the non-inferiority of intranasal dexcat or intravenous dexcat. This is still an ongoing trial. Now I'll show some uh, short pictures or videos. Most of the, my previous videos got deleted. So these are a few of them which are left with me. I'll just show it. This is a circumcision one year old. 8 kg under dexcat and caudal with ETCO2 monitoring. I don't monitor this regularly, but just to for presentation and using a 18 gauge track cap to monitor the ETCO2 in this patient. This is four years old for intraocular lens implant. I've done more than 30, 40 cases of intraocular lens implant under this combination. The surgeon is very fast, does it within 10 15 minutes. I usually give a text kit, and then the surgeon himself gives the block, very well block, and that's enough. These are two endoscopic foreign body uh, removal one in uh, two and a half years old uh, child, 
This was a battery cell, three days old, lying in the lower esophagus. And the other is a five rupee coin, which was there in the esophagus. This is a three years old child. Mustard on more than 25, 30, uh, these kind of foreign bodies in kids, which is text kit and 10% LA spray. This is three and a half years for lacrimal probing under text kit. For lacrimal probing, if the surgeon wants to do syringes, then it has to be done very gradually, uh, putting a um, catheter tip in the you know, oropharynx, not stimulating the oropharynx, but just keep the tip in the oropharynx and gentle suctioning. Ask the surgeon to do it gradually. Otherwise, the patient may make up during syringe. This is two and a half years, 12 kg congenital hernia, legs cut plus spinal. This is congenital hernia again, one and a half years, 9 kg, X cut plus caudal with NIVP, TCO2, and SPO2 monitoring. This is just for presentation purpose, different types of monitoring. This was a one year old, 14 kg. Hemoglobin was 5 grams, OSA with difficult venous access, and airway, large abscess on the medial side of the thigh. Venous access was taken on the left foot, and just X cut was given for abscess drainage. This is two and a half years, nine kg for systolithotomy and prepusal dilatation for phimosis, dexket, and spinal. Not even oxygen is required with dexket alone. If you don't use propofol, then there is no airway collapse or desaturation. This is two months old kit for tenotomy. Most of the times I do tenotomy with dex kit and caudal block, but this was done with just dex kit and local rotation at the incision site. This was sort of Ludwig's in five months old, 6.5 kg neck abscess, dex kit alone. Generally avoid propofol in such kind of cases. Large abscess. This was a Two years old, nine kg lacerated on soft pellet. A suturing was done in the dex kit with local invitation. This is just 20 days old neonet with extra digits on both hands, weighing 3.5 kg. Dex kit was given and local invitation. This is six years old, fracture both bone forearm. K wire fixation under interscal knee block after giving dex cut. This is lasso tendon repair in a slightly uh, bigger children, 14 years old, 30 kg. Lasso tendon repair for claw hand due to leprosy, dex cut, and local local analysis. This is a collage of uh, different uh, difficult airway procedures in kids, which I have done. And that's all. Thank you very much for patient listening. These are a few of the references. And if there are any questions, I'll be very happy to answer. I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Was it clear all through? Yes, sir. Yeah, this is what? Okay. It's very much clear. For participant, any question, kindly put in question and answer box. Sir, uh, you are giving a dex kit IV. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to know uh, what is time schedule for that giving dex and uh, ketamine IV? I usually mix them together. You have to yeah, mix yeah. them together for proper uh, effect because mm -hmm. uh, dexmate has a slower onset and ketamine yes, yes, usually yes. speeds the slow onset of dexmate. So better uh, combine them together. I usually combine is... 0.5 mcg per kg of dexmate and 1 milligram per kg of ketamine in a single syringe, 5 ml syringe. 
Mm-hmm. Make it to around five ml, and then give it slowly around or half or one minute, and pat it to okay. effect once the child is hydrated. In a syringe of five ml or two ml syringe, you mix up five ml syringe. I use five ml. You mix it both things. Huh. Take both the two things in one syringe and then dilute it again. Okay. Five ml. Okay. And try to the dose. Okay. Usually three to four ml of this combination is sufficient to sedate the child. Yes. 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 Or more painful procedures, you may need some propofol or some local anesthesia. But okay. for just sedation before your blocks or spinal or region, that is sufficient. So you mix uh, both things in yes. five ml and uh, one to two minutes. Uh, you will give with children. Is it? Pardon. It it will be uh, given duration of one to two minutes. You mentioned within one minute. Actually, I am now used to it, so I give it to, uh, within half a minute or according to situation. Nothing usually happens. There can be uh, so. Uh, last time, uh, so many. Uh, I think uh, that uh, Nike Madam's case meet was that clip palate and surgery, and she was. Uh, Reluctant about Dexmed in uh, situation you were there, and uh, she told about fifteen to twenty minutes duration for Dexmed, actually. Uh, but yeah, you are mentioning have, uh, I have used uh, uh, Dexcat in uh, cleft lip palate surgeries with good effect. Actually, okay. there were two cases where uh, intubation was not possible previously by some other anesthetists, and the cases were Pierre Robin's Pierre Robin syndrome, and they brought to us uh, in our OP. So I just gave Dexcat and then CO induction and on spontaneous ventilation, my resident did the intubation with uh, TASCOPE, that video laryngoscope. I have that video on Facebook actually long back. So it is very useful in difficult airway situations. You can take as much of time you need to intubate with uh, spontaneous ventilation. And after securing everything, then only we give the relaxant to the patient. Yes, yes. This is very miraculous drug. Mm. Yes, it is very useful in such situations and uh, for foreign body removals and all. Various types of scopies. I think there are a few questions. Yes, sir. Uh, one question I, I don't feel it's uh, sir. If ketamine is not available, what doses of propofol and dexmed can we we use? Uh, dexmed. These both drugs are not. Uh, I mean, strong analgesics. They don't complement each other. They can cause bradycardia, hypotension. Both of them can cause. So it's better not to use them together. Yes. Uh, whenever I do use uh, dexmed as a bolus for uh, major surgeries. Then I use ketofol as an induction agent to avoid the side effects of uh, dexmed. Oh, yes. When I don't mix dexmed with ketamine, then I mix ketamine with propofol for better effect. So that the side effects of these two drugs together, they can cause precipitous hypotension and bradycardia. So better not to use these two drugs together. On our um, Kishore uh, is asking, sir, how to manage hypotension post procedure after Dexcat? Dexcat usually don't cause any hemodynamic fluctuations. Uh, these are very well maintained. On the contrary, patient can have some hypertension because of the. I mean, it depends on what combination you are taking these drugs. If the patient has initial hypertension, you can take more of Dexmed and less of ketamine. If the patient already has some tachycardia, then you take more of Dexmed, less of ketamine. So accordingly, you can choose your combinations. So in Dexcat, you use, uh, sir, uh, you use any prediction like atropine, glyco before no, doing not that? needed. Okay. Unless it is a intraoral surgery or something like that, I don't use uh, pyrolate because Dexmed so, has a nice drying effect. Okay. So in, in uh, pediatric patients, uh, when you are using uh, Dexcat for UGI or uh, you know, no, not procedural needed. sedation, you don't use 
atropine as routine procedure point of view. No, not needed. Dex even, has even, a very nice uh, drying effect. Even midazolam also you are excluding. No, no, not, not to be used. Otherwise, patient can have some extra sedation and there can be airway collapse. And you may need to supplement with some oxygen and all. So to keep the airway patency, better not to use anything along with this. If at all you need something, you use a little propofol. Just sleeping doses of propofol. So next question from Srikant Jaiswal. He's a very wonderful person, sir. He's working at Umarkhead. And uh, yeah, today only I had an opportunity to talk with him. And uh, he's asking what is the incidence of laryngoswazam after performing any painful procedures like induction of regional and performance of surgical procedure with DEXK. Incidence of laryngoswazam and you? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. The airway issues are almost nil after DEXK. This is the I mean, greatest advantage of uh, this DEXK. The airway potency and tone is very well maintained. You don't need to handle the airway at all. And in painful procedures, either you use local anesthesia along with this combination, either you give a regional block or something. For painful procedures, you can even use little propofol. For laryngospasm point of view? Laryngospasm, I haven't seen till date in, with this combination. Yeah. Even Sir, but, in patients with upper respiratory infection, I have given many cases where there was uh, upper respiratory infections in COVID also. I am using this combination not only in kids, but in all sort of patients. The more morbid the patient is, more useful this combination is. I mean, I have used this combination in patients with CRF and all, aid create as a procedural sedation, and then use either local or regional blocks. The patients so you are, use, uh, yeah, yeah. Please, sir, please. The patients usually recover very well. There is no post-op nausea or vomiting. Patient can go home within two hours. Like small procedures like uh, sebaceous yeast and all, I just give dex kit and local infiltration. So patients are very happy. There is no pain, no post-op nausea or vomiting. Uh, able to take oral within half an hour. They can go home within two hours. All day care procedures under Dexcat. I use once uh, Dexcat. Uh, you mentioned about our topic uh, last week or two, three weeks back. Uh, we discussed on that. And I did a uh, use of Dexcat in a uh, uh, congenital head to see patient. Yeah. With, the, with the LA, that surgeon used to do with the LA. So I, I gave an uh, Dexcat and it's very wonderful. Uh, drugs. Yes, not, that, nothing, nothing is required actually. No, yeah, yeah. Even nothing, nothing. Uh, actually, Just before sleep that, like natural sleep. Yes, before that, I used to give atropine, midas, vitamin, profile, like that. But when I used Dexcape, um, patient was really uh, out of uh, sleep. Uh, he's, uh, uh, I'm asked, uh, what is your name? And he's very peacefully answered my questions. I'm really, really appreciate, sir. Just like natural sleep, they sleep yes. for a while, fits, uh, but uh, nothing, nothing else. They yeah. don't usually have post op nausea vomiting or anything else, unless the patient has something else which can yes. cause yes. nausea vomiting. But with Dexcat alone, it is not there. Post procedure or pre procedure agitation was abolished by Dexcat. It's really yeah. in extremes of ages, it is very useful, yes, yes. in extremes of ages, and more morbid the patient is more comorbidities the patient has, it is especially useful. Out of this uh, topic, I want to ask, sir, uh, are you using this combination for in adults also? Yeah, yeah. that's what I told you. I'm using it, this for all my daycare procedures, like small uh, fibroadenoma, sebaceous cyst removal. For uh, other painful procedures, I use generous propofol also along with Dexcat. Like in adults in, also. In adults. Okay. When, uh, for MTB procedure is, also, you using this drug nowadays? For which? For DNC MTB procedures. Depends. For, I actually use it uh, for old patients for only DNC. For okay. uh, primary gravida or uh, some MTPs. Six and eight weeks. Uh, 
then i use either fentanyl or protein midas because there you need some strong stimulus is there with dilatation okay. or okay. if i use dexcat then i use generous propofol i mean around 100 uh, grams of propofol along with this combination okay. And so in old ages, it's work for DNC. Yeah, only in morbid uh, obese patients. Yes, yes. And in morbid ill patients, only dexcat is sufficient. You don't need anything else. Not even propofol. So the only thing is, is the... if you use uh, some extra amount of ketamine, then patients, especially female, younger female patients, can yes. have that delirium and uh, psychological this thing. Uh, then you can use propofol. Okay. so uh, we we come across a lot of uh, time that um, uh, table on table surgeon came <laughs> with 80 plus 90 plus ages uh, and that patient for pv building and they are asking for dnc and uh, that time i'm um, really uh, what we uh, what i can say concern about that sedation part of and if, you are uh, just answered that question just use that that to yes, that to yes, just yes. 20 25 mcg of dex and 50 mg of ketamine mixed together and just tighter to effect that's all with the, with 5 ml syringe yes, slowly with 5 ml syringe. That's, that's all patient don't need anything else and there the able to take oral within the half ha ah, sir ha ah, sir please Can please ask question in chat box madhe ह्या सर मी तेच क्वेश्चन घेत घेत सरांशी टॉक करतोय कारण माझे क्वेश्चन काय आहेत कारण मी मलाही क्वेश्चन विचारायचे नाही नाही नक्की नाही कारण सर हे एवढे वॉन्टेड पर्सन आहेत आपल्याला नाही मिळणार नंतर आय कॅन टॉक टॉक इम ऑन फोन ऑल्सो इट्स नॉट प्रॉब्लेम बट दिस इज रेकॉर्डेड वर्शन सो इट इज रेकॉर्डेड इन अवर युट्यूब चॅनल ऑल्सो सो एनिबडी कॅन हिअर सो आय एम आस्किंग ऑल क्वेश्चन अलॉट विथ दिस सो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आय विल टेक विथ अवर प्रेसिडेंट सर परमिशन सर कॅन वी डू ब्रॉकोस्कोपी अंडर डेक्सपर्ट फ्रॉम डॉक्टर सुनील दीक्षित इज आस्किंग सचिन त्याच्या आधी आहे ना डेक्समेड अपस्कोअर युज ऑफ पायरोलेट नाही सर तो नंतर आहे नंतर आहे आता आपण ऑलरेडी वर आहेत ऍक्च्युली मी श्रीकांत जयस्वाल जे आहेत उमरखेडचे आपले त्यांच्या नंतरचा क्वेश्चन घेतोय ऍक्च्युली ब्रॉकोस्कोपी इट कॅन बी युज जस्ट लाईक यु हॅव टू प्रिपेअर द एअर वे विथ आयदर नेबुलायझेशन ऑर टेन पर्सेंट स्प्रे अँड यू कॅन युज डेक्समेड एज अडेशन इफ यू आर नॉट इंटिबेटिंग द पेशंट देन यू कॅन व्हेरी वेल युज दिस कॉम्बिनेशन So it's like one is to two ratio for for bronchoscopy. Yes, also. one is to two is ideal ratio what I use. But you can okay. change the ratio according to your patient. Suppose okay. your patient is a hypertensive one, then you can take more of dexmed and less of ketamine. Suppose okay. your patient has a hypotension, then less of dexmed and more of ketamine. Okay. So you can alter your permutation combinations according to your need. so i think the next question will from uh, it's from uh, from dr sandeep jado how what premedication you give prior to use dexcat combination already we discussed i think not required till, till not you can not required any premedication sir is asking our senior sb sir we generally mention him sb sir he is a sudhir kulkarni sir he is asking does use of texmed obscure the use of pyrolate that also i think you covered yes generally the dex has a very nice drying effect and ketamine in limited doses does not increase the salivation much if you increase the dose of ketamine very much then only you can have such issues of increased salivation and increased secretions and laring goes positive etc but with this much dose of the ketamine with dexmed it generally don't cause any increased salivation uh, from uh, prasuna madam uh, she is uh, our another brand junior person she is asking sir can we use in bronchoscopy patient had already having lung infection yes, and yes. for all airway procedures for all airway procedures even for difficult intubation procedures when you are uh, trying this uh, 
fiber optic intubation or some other intubations like even for blind nasal intubations we at times give dex kit to the patient just to alleviate his uh, anxiety and all sir in pediatric patients the tone and integrity of the airways there is no such issues the airway can even in morbid obese patients it still maintains the tone of uh, airways so no need to actually secure the airway in hurry with this combination uh, such things can happen when you use midazolam or propofol or even fentanyl in excess doses the airway can get collapsed and you need to ventilate the patient but nothing such happens with excat alone if you use propofol along with that or midaz then can happen but with excat alone no such issue is there so uh, generally uh, i want to ask her uh, in neonate or pediatric patients uh, you are using dexcat and patient is uh, having active urti and still maybe you miss that thing and you you give hydrocord all these things but still there is coughing in intra procedure like for congenital hernia or circumcision that time what you use generally and yeah. actually with uh, i have used excat in patients with uh, upper respiratory infections also for short procedures like you said circumcision hernia or below umbilical procedures so generally used with either caudal or spinal or uh, uh, penile block for circumcisions so usually just hold the airway and don't intervene much usually subsides you want to give the patient cups if you try and give some propofol or try to intervene the airway handle the airway then can create some problems but just wait and watch usually nothing happens just uh, give the airway, or... whatever extra secretions you can suck it gently if at all any part, of, any part of nebulization like that if there is a spasm or something like that then you can use other things like bronchodilators nebulizers don't think of you don't you don't use no, nebulization no, no, no need no need don't stimulate the airway okay sir just be like that only the patient coughing patient is coughing means he is conscious so just hold the airway just give support don't handle the airway unnecessarily sir you uh... Uh, from Dr. Kishore Manurkar, sir, you, have you ever used antidote of Dexmed if accidentally given more drug? Uh, it's not available actually, atimazole, and still it is in animal trials. It's, uh, I don't know it is available anywhere. I never got access to that drug. Atipamazole Atipam Atipam is a antagonist of this Dexmed, anti-sedan. I think it's. Is it name. freely available at no, your place? I, I haven't seen. I don't know. Uh, what I read is it is still in animal trials. They have done. If it is available or not, I don't know. So this thing uh, happen with you any? you need uh, antidote like that no nothing so uh, that concern with kishore Usually after kishore. the initial bolus most of the yeah. times nothing is needed if you use some uh, regional block or something the child is mostly sedated for almost half an hour or uh, uh, during the complete procedure if at all you need you need just short boluses of the same mixture if the child gets up then the child sleeps again for another half an hour or one hour so this combination is really not needed if your block is perfect this combination is for almost for 60 minutes it will work nicely dexcat yeah, depends on the uh, anxiety level of the kid or activities and the age of the kid sir you are using uh, dexmed in segmental spinal also i think yeah 
for more prolonged action i use intrathecal dexmet or uh, along with uh, segmental spinal most of the times when uh, during laparoscopy sedation needed i use dexcat dexcat with dexmet in the intrathecal purpose also on uh, dexmet intrathecally for when i need some prolonged effects yeah, uh, as dexmet can prolong the effect of spinal uh, almost up to 3 to 5 hours with the okay. same dose dexkit iv uh, dexkit intrathecal along with uh, iv iv has uh, some uh, uh, this what you call is uh, analgesic sparing effects of weird sparing effects for almost yes. uh, 24 hours if you use intravenously so you can uh, you are using dexkit in uh, intrathecal i don't use the combination to in intrathecally only dex intravenously okay i use only dex one is either ketamine dex or dex intrathecally i don't use this combinations i mean this can be used but uh, i don't use more than one you use uh, dex med in intrathecally uh, yes in segmental yes. also yes yes uh, that Then combination is a longer duration of effect it works almost 2 3 hours like that yeah yeah more than at times uh, it takes around 4 5 hours also when i used it for the first time the patient was not moving his legs for almost 5 hours i was a little bit worried uh, so then i started using less of uh, dexmet nowadays your uh, those for intrathecal segmental spinal how much you use it depends on for, the procedure uh, actually Just for a cholecystectomy, open open cholecystectomy or lap cholecystectomy, how much? You Just use? rinse the syringe with uh, Dexmed. That is around two to three micrograms. It's like flushing of syringe. That. Just uh, flush it. Okay. To ML syringe. Okay, sir. <coughs> Sorry. And then, if you want to have an accurate calculation, you can use that BCG syringe <coughs> for accurate calculation. maximum uh, dose i used is 10 micrograms so one one, one my personal query is that uh, i use i am giving now days levonavin in segmental spinal at level t uh, l1 to t10 in between uh, when procedure is below t6 i used to give around uh, l1 to t12 or t12 to t11 not above that and uh, sometime it is sparing effects at sacrum levels what to do means at that time what should i do it depends for what procedure you are doing it i mean if you are giving adequate dose uh, suppose 2 ml at that level you have mentioned t10 to l1 yes 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 so that yes. much dose 2 ml is sufficient for around 60 to 80 minutes yes yes even yes. for sacral levels if the procedure goes beyond this time then the effect starts receding from sacral roots and patient can have discomfort during pelvic manipulation no sir from starting to in between also sacral um, sparing is uh, showing and i used to give next this, this problem is with isobaric drugs they take little time for onset at the sacral level i mean after 10 minutes the effect is perfect at sacral But roots i use it this much this. dose if your dose is very less then there is sacral sparing for Yes, yes. because I, i use it uh, actually i use in uh, uh, above oblique procedures most of the time that nephrectomy or stegon calculus or colecystectomy you know, or like that but i use it in even hysterectomy abdominal hysterectomy is also i give uh, you can use a combination of two drugs you can okay. use a little hyperbaric initially 0.5 ml and then uh, around 1.5 to 2 ml of isobaric in different i used this. to give liu and i mean heavy 2 ml in these patients and two two cases i observe uh, sacral sparing was there and right. something the heavy yes, there should not be any sacral sparing either yeah, yeah. two cases i observe in injection you must have lost some drug during injection or okay. the needle got displaced okay because uh, overall relaxation was good surgeon no was happy experience. with this procedure uh, what i gave but uh, whenever pulling is there that time patient was complaining about no no that is uh, you must have lost some drug during injection or some needle might have got displaced during injection something like that dose is inadequate 
with hyperbaric no such sparing usually occurs so with uh, 0.5 ml uh, liu i mean heavy and isobaric 1.5 ml mixing of yes, both 5 to 2 ml depending on the duration you want for and, females uh, you mentioned in uh, one of your uh, recordings i uh, in tas i i am uh, record uh, almost i heard all your uh, videos that in that you mentioned about liu i mean heavy you started in uh, giving segmental span i'm doing that only only two cases i observed that mm -hmm. the leo and i mean heavy i am not using much but ropey we can heavy i am using for all my lcs cases almost with uh, uh, segmental spinal not segmental it is almost uh, uh, routine lumbar spinal for heavy i usually use uh, routine lumbar levels unless it is a open procedure and you want uh, higher levels like open uh, cholecystectomy uh, with a very limited dose of hyperbaric then i use higher spaces just 1 to 1.5 ml of the hyperbaric drug at higher levels in right lateral position for open cholecystectomy that depends on the patient procedure so now it is you are using ropey we can isobaric drug for segmental span pardon now it is you are using uh, ropey we can for segmental ropey span Ha! Huh. If Leo B P V K N is not available, I use uh, isobaric P V K N or okay. chlorprocaine. If the procedure is very short, chlorprocaine okay, is also sir. very good drug. Yes, yes, I use, but not in segment. Forty to sixty. Yes, you can use it for laparoscopic cubectomies, laparoscopic uh, this short diagnostic laparoscopies. In segmental. Forty to forty-five minutes. Yes. Okay, Around two point five. P V K N I never use, sir, uh, because uh, P V K N just introduced nowadays, and. Uh, I hardly use one time, but there is no relaxation. Surgeon complaining a lot of in in the. In there the is a little less relaxation. Yeah, yeah. So levonorgestrel is uh, very much comfortable uh, with segmental point of view. Okay, I, I will take next questions. Question, sir. Yeah, yeah. I will take next question from Dr. Sandeep Jadhav asking role of urinary catheterization after spinal, especially below ten year old child. Role of urinary catheterization after spinal, especially below. generally what happens in kids uh, the uh, effect wears off very rapidly as the csf volume is almost double than the adult so whatever drug you give uh, it wears off very fast in adults it is 2 ml per kg csf volume in kids it is almost 4 ml per kg so the effect is very short lived and they pass urine uh within one and one to two hours i generally don't use any additives uh, with uh, these drugs in spinal so the effect wears off very fast and don't need any urinary catheterizations yeah for post op analgesia use some blocks along with this like for hernia surgeries i use some additional local infiltration at the incision site or tap block or penile block for uh, circumcisions if permitted generally not required i mean not i don't remember any way uh, if it was required in pediatric patient catheterization next question from sb sir again what is contraindications to use of dexmed can we give it in asthmatic patients yes it is very good for asthmatic patient almost uh, no contraindications unless the patient is very anxious and the patient can have delirium emergence with ketamine in even in that cases also you can use more of dexmed and less of ketamine but uh, it is more useful in morbid ill cases the more morbid ill the case is more strong indication is for dexmed so uh Uh, what what is the take home message is no contraindication till now for dexmed yeah you can that. use it uh, according to situation uh, you can vary the components according to your need especially in uh, patients with irritable respiratory tract it is very useful because there is no airway issues with dexmed 
Uh, almost. Uh, Any other questions? I, I don't think any questions. At present, nothing question. There is a, a lot of appreciation from all members. A lot of emojis were also flagged. Thank you for that. So, uh, from Sunil Dixit from Chandrapur, thanks. He's mentioning even our um, Prasuna Madam also mentioning thank you for this talk. Overall, uh, all questions were answered till now. Uh, nothing is left. Still, any question other than this topic, like uh, Sir's next topic is, we know everyone. He is a pioneer of segmental spinal. So, My any question on that? Is, you want to... uh, on 29th, 30th of October at Bangalore, actually, okay, sir. online presentation. Okay, sir. This is pre tech on conference, I think. So, please share with your uh, that link or anything. Is available. Uh, I with haven't got any for that. That is a two days online conference, and then there is physical one in okay. November. This is online first, 29th, 30th October, and then 19th, 20th of November mm -hmm. is physical mm -hmm. one uh, workshop like. So uh, I think uh, on that also, anybody wants to ask questions can please because. These are stalwarts never come again and again with us to meet. No, no, I am freely available 24 by 7. <laughs> yeah, no, but a face to face meeting and uh, that uh, freely asking nothing if like you want to. If, yeah, but no, sir. Yeah. Very, 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 you are the stalwarts. What are the limitations? There? You are the, our own uh, member from uh, ISA chapter Maharashtra. We can uh, really ask you anything. Uh, as a, it's, it's a private sure. forum, sir. So I'm, I'm really appreciative. What I, what I, what is my actually concern is, I'm uh, we are in Silver Jubilee here, I say in Andhra City branch, and I need one private forum that was not recorded till date in India that we should um, ask our questions or anything uh, to our seniors also and any problems related to that. So I um, started this I say YouTube channel also. So repeatedly a person can hear repeatedly. And a yes. lot of small, small things you are speaking in your talk that was uh, really, I'm, I'm experienced till now. So I'm going through that phases, what will happen next or what I uh, experienced a lot, lot of time in my private practice that, that is I'm sharing with all of you. So these people will learn through this. So I'm uh, one of the, my uh, small gratitude from my ICCD brand that everybody will learn from you and all stalwarts of IS in Anded or I am actually very much amazed by your work, Sachin. Actually, uh, I yes, don't sir. know how you manage such activities every week. It's very difficult. I am also IS president Amrauti, but it's very difficult to collect all people to for meeting and all. And it's very difficult to arrange a monthly meeting even. And you are arranging it every week. That is uh, really creditable. Oh, I just can't imagine that we are actually finding it very difficult to conduct every month even. So hats off to you. Actually, you are conducting every week. That's great. So it's your, uh, what I can say, it's, uh, it's okay those. that uh, we come here only for an hour, but you are doing it every week and that too very regularly. So just in career nothing sir it's uh, because of you it's happening not no, like no. it's not mine uh, okay, but i am also it's, it's your, your, your work you are uh, basically it's your work you are uh, freely available with all of us and you are sharing your knowledge on this platform that was the uh, great thing not mine because i am just a mediator uh, arranging is also uh, i mean every week that too. It's a really great work. And you need some dedication for that. It's not easy. I know. <laughs> it's very difficult to... I mean, It's I our president and our, our branch. They are giving me moral yeah. support for everything. No other branch is doing that. this uh, yes, regularly. Yes. So, academic uh, committee also, they are suggesting to yes. talk or topics we for that. Right for every month even, but 
I'm, I'm, I will I will doing uh, next uh, after October I will doing this uh, monthly session with MMC points. Basically, what I think is uh, MMC points are not getting with this. So I like to because of our private forum point of view, I'm thinking that most of the members are coming for CME, but they don't get the MMC points. We are going uh, next, CME. Uh, our next meet on 16th of October is with MMC points. We are Maybe already applied no, for it. Yeah, basically, our um, case meets are completed up, up to November, actually. But uh, from November, I will do week, uh, without week, we'll do monthly case meets with four or five speakers and one hour or two or three hours case meets with MMC points. I tried a lot of for uh, one, point, one, uh, one hour credit for speaker, 0.5 for viewers with MMC, a lot of uh, email and exchanges happen, but not possible till date. Uh, we'll do mm, from November for all our members that they, at least they get 12 points for next year to every yes. month, one point or two points like that. So thank you, sir. A lot of um, what I can say gratitude uh, from our ISA uh, Nandit chapter that you came on a very short notice whenever I call you, you are very My easily available. Um, I can always be there whenever you call me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I will conclude. Uh, this is our Platinum Jubilee celebration and uh, Silver Jubilee celebration year. So i uh, happy to share that. Next week, we will be with uh, CatLab in and out all on 13th with uh, Dr. Lipika Madam. She will tell us a lot of things on Cat Labs. So meet on 13th September. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye.